welcome back to my channel so we're here it's it's ending finally the finale the wedding episodes of love is blind season seven the dc season and while i was watching this episode i kept pausing i kept pausing because almost every scene pissed me off starting off with marissa and ramses ramses is trash he is diabolical and i think on the list of men this season egregious men this season he ranks at number two, right below Tyler. Now, he may not be hiding three kids like Tyler and abandoning his children like Tyler, but the fact that Ramsey's cosplays as this progressive, social, social justice, loving, respectful partner, when really all he speaks are platitudes. And the way he just kept running around in circles, talking in circles, while Marissa is crying real tears is just crazy. And I really felt for Marissa that, that scene. I mean, she was crying. You could tell she was deeply hurt. And the fact that he, up until two days before the wedding, was like, yeah, I'm all in. Yeah, I want to get married. But it's clear he didn't want to get married. I mean, just the audacity. Marissa really deserves better. I found it really hurtful that Ramses, in the end, threw it back in her face when she said in the pods that she doesn't want to, her, her fear is that a man will say she's too much. And what does Ramsey say? She's too much. Her energy is too much. And I'm like, what the heck do you mean? Like, what is wrong with you? You acted as if you were some kind of moral beacon. Meanwhile, you ain't ish. You ain't ish, Ramses. Like, Marissa has a bright future ahead of her and you are just going to continue being a player and pretending to be something you're not. At least they didn't make it to the altar and hopefully wherever Marissa is now, she's still working on herself, healing and being, you know, in her law career that she's, she's starting because Ramsey's is not worth it. When Marissa called her mom, I, I really felt, felt for her in that moment because at the end of the day, like when people, I was looking at Reddit and people were talking about the scene where Marissa meets, Ram, uh, Marissa's mom meets Ramses and Marissa's mom, they were like, she's evil, she's this, she's that. And to be honest, watching that scene, I didn't come to that same conclusion. Does Marissa's mom need therapy? Oh, absolutely. And the mom's actions of choosing partners that it didn't work for her and created a broken home for her and her children was not good. Um, Marissa's mom calling her daughter the B word, not tactful at all. However, outside of all of that, I believe that Marissa's mom was acting out of fear, you know, for her daughter to not get hurt and not to repeat the mistakes of what she went through in the past. And at the end of the day, out of love. I do believe at the end of the day, Marissa's mom cares about Marissa and her, her other children. And the fact that Marissa called her mom at the end of the day, it proves that they do have a relationship. It may not be perfect, but they do have a relationship. So we get to the bachelor party, bachelor, bachelorette party. And the men get like a really fun bachelor. They go to the, the Wizards game, the Washington Wizards NBA team. And honestly, I was kind of jealous because the bachelorette party was not, it didn't look fun to me at all. The ladies were in some weird like sleepover thing where they had like bracelets and were doing each other's hair. Like it just seemed really low energy. Meanwhile, the men get to basically be invited as like low level celebrities get to go courtside at the Wizards game and, and have fun. And I'm just like, man. Why can't it be for the women too? At least something equally fun. I know I would love that for my bachelor party. Yes, take me to a basketball game. Put me on the court. Let me pretend to be a professional basketball player for a little bit because that was just, it was just, it just seemed really stereotypical. Like, oh, guys get the big sports uh, uh, event and the girls get a little frilly thing, a little frilly sleepover. Like it, it did not need much screen time. And seeing Tyler hanging out with his boys like during the basketball event just pissed me off because I'm like, you don't deserve to have fun. I'm sorry. You out here lying that you have three children, abandoning them, denying their existence, just willfully lying left and right. Like he did not deserve to have fun. Ashley and Tyler's wedding is first. 
And Ashley, man, I'm sorry. I think I said it in my last video. If she is still with this man, and from people who are sleuthing on the internet, it seems like she still is because she's defending him in the Instagram comments and things like that. If she's still with this man, I can't feel sorry for her. And why I can't feel sorry for her? Because you are actively supporting a man who is not with his kids. He's not supporting his kids. He's not in his kids' life anymore. He just cut them off. How can you be okay with that? Just because you want to get married? There were some interesting things from the time, like when the Ashley and her bridesmaids and family and everybody was getting ready. And you can tell where she is now and how she ended up picking Tyler is definitely a product of how she grew up. For example, she talks about how she dreamed she was a bride since she was a kid. And I'm just like, we need to stop. We need to stop that. Like we need to stop telling young girls that marriage and having a beautiful wedding is something to aspire to because you're making them impressionable and having them believe that marriage is the end all be all having a beautiful wedding is the end all be all i i'll just tell you something about me when i was a kid growing up my dream was to have my own place a really nice job and like make money <laughs> make money have a nice job have my own house that was always my dream as a kid because I grew up in an environment where I did not have my own, you know, house. Like I didn't grow up in a, in a like two story house or anything like that. So having my own place, my own room, something that is mine has always been something that was important to me. Now, of course, do I want love? Yes. Like, would I like to get married someday? Yes. But I know it's not the end all be all. And I think it's really problematic. And I'm sure maybe her, like her mom has told her about like, oh, you know, getting married is a really important thing. But I also think, because we learn a little bit later on, Ashley growing up in a broken home with a diabolical dad. We may not know all of what the dad did, but the little that Ashley has said on the screen about him, he did not seem like an involved father. Um, and he hurt her mom, you know, emotionally and stuff like that. So... We really need to to stop this like idealization of marriage from, you know, from youth on young girls because it's setting them up for failure in the end. <sighs> Tyler's friends are trash. You know, you could really tell who someone is with the people that they associate themselves with. And Tyler associates himself with diabolical men. His friends know who he really is. He did not change within a, a month. They know all the down and dirty he'd be doing. They know he has kids. They know he has a messy situation with his baby mama. And the fact that they're all acting as if none of that exists. Like, it's crazy. And the way they talk is so crude. Talking about, and I thought it was really inappropriate. And any man with tact would call it out. But Tyler lacks tact. And we've seen it from all the other stuff exposed about him. Any man who has tact would just shut it down. The fact that his friends were like, oh, so what are you guys going to do after the wedding? And Tyler, as gross as he is, he's like, oh, yeah, we're going to smash. We're going to have kids. Like, what is this obsession with putting a baby inside a woman? Like, it is disgusting. You do know, Tyler, that it's not all about just making the kids. You have to be an involved father. But I guess Tyler doesn't know because just like Ashley growing up with a not so good person for a father Tyler also grew up with a not so good person as a father in fact Tyler talks about how like he's um not necessarily upset but like disappointed that his father didn't come to the wedding and I'm like okay so you know you you don't like your what your dad did growing up you knew your dad wasn't good to you yet here you are doing the same if not worse thing to your own children and about to do the same thing to the woman you're getting married to, except this woman is willing to ignore all red flags and be with you. And then Ashley talking about how she feels safe with him and, you know, he's protecting her emotions. And I'm, I, the whole time, in fact, the whole time Ashley is talking about um, her and Tyler's relationship and what they've gone through within three weeks to her friends, 
I just had to keep pausing because I was just like, girl, are you for real? Like, okay, say she didn't know, because I'm sure, I don't know, she might not have known about all the information we know now about Tyler. But the little you've been exposed to him, if she was truly healed or at least discerning about the process. Now, we know Love is Blind, you know, they do this on purpose. The whole show is like, you got to get married in like four weeks, whatever, right? However, there are people who don't make connections on Love is Blind and we don't know anything about them. Like, they'll be on the show for two seconds, but then they leave because they probably like, okay, nothing materialized. They didn't make a strong enough connection and they leave. Ashley's telling her friends in the the suite that she feels safe with with Tyler, that he's protects her emotions, and I was just like, "Are you for real? Like, why are you lying to yourself? Like, this man has not been honest to you at all from from day one. And again, even if she didn't know, because I don't, I, who knows? We don't know if she knew everything when Tyler revealed he had sperm donor children, whatever." Even if she didn't know all the details we know now, back then, the fact that this man didn't tell you he had children two, until two weeks before the wedding should have been the red flag. Actually, before that, the fact that this man said, oh, when we get back, some people might say not nice things about me, but it's not true. And you still were like, uh-huh. And then you tell us and him that no one can convince you otherwise that he's bad. So you, from day one, because you want to get married so bad, was willing to put on the blinders with the little information of how this man has been behaving to you. I mean, Tyler's gross. This obsession with trying to get women pregnant needs to stop. It is absolutely disgusting. I will say Ashley looked gorgeous. She's a very beautiful woman. Her mom is gorgeous. Her grandma's gorgeous. Her whole family and friends are, everyone's gorgeous. But it's clear that there's some generational trauma there. She said her granddad wasn't good to her grandmom. Her dad wasn't good to her mom. And now here she is choosing a man that is probably the worst of the worst in, in general. It's, it's really sad to see. They get married. Their vows are eh, like it, I, I didn't really care. And then they did the, um, the jumping of the broom, which was about like, okay, you, it's an African-American tradition during the times of slavery. And you're supposed to like jump into this new season and that pissed me off, too, because I'm like, not y'all doing traditions and sweeping your past lives. So just like screw those kids, huh? Like pretend that doesn't exist is it's really interesting. Also, something I noticed after their kiss at the altar and her and Tyler are walking away, you know, usually when a from from pictures, like videos I've seen of like my peers getting married and stuff after the kiss of the altar where you're like, oh, now become husband and wife. You and your now husband, you walk down the aisle together. I did not see that with Ashley and Tyler. It was so weird. Like something was kind of standoffish. They did not hold hands when they were coming down the aisle. She was on her side waving, you know, and uh, Tyler was his, on his side waving. You know, actually, I thought about that in that moment. I was like, I wonder, because the internet streets are saying that Tyler is going to say that Ashley knows everything. So I wonder if both of them, if, if both of them are in on it, because even their kisses, it was like little, little pecks, like it didn't seem romantic. And then Ashley, when they're doing the little, um, not confessional, but the one-on-one with her and Tyler sitting together, they just keep talking about, oh, we're married. And, and Ashley's like, oh, I'm married. I have a ring. I have another ring. I'm no longer a fiance. Like it didn't seem authentic. So I wonder if maybe they're both playing the game. Like, she knows Tyler ain't ish, and Tyler knows he doesn't actually want to do this, but they're willing to stay in this dysfunctional relationship just to prove that, yeah, I'm married, I'm married, I'm married. It's it's just, it's pathetic. I'll, I'll get to Taylor and Aguirre in a second, which I don't have much to say about them because they were pretty, they were pretty non-problematic for most of the season, um, so I'm not going to say too much about them, but... I want to talk a little bit about Jesse Wu. Lord, Jesse, don't come for me (laughs) because I do enjoy watching your vlogs, your YouTube channel. Like I'm a subscriber. I love watching your content. Like anytime you upload, I look forward to watching your videos. I've been following you since the pandemic. Like you're amazing. 
but I'm right now I'm watching her her current video where she's reviewing the wedding episodes as well. I'm only halfway through. And I just want to say that while I agree wholeheartedly and I love that Jesse Wu is a supporter of black women, um, you know, our our goals, our beauty, our happiness, like I love that about her. As a fellow black woman, we need the support. We need to support each other. However, one thing I've noticed and, you know, I think if it's okay to like follow a YouTuber that you're not always going to agree with, right? I think that makes them really compelling because it shows that they're being their authentic self, right? But one thing I've noticed is that Jessie Wu, especially her being a dark-skinned black woman, she has a lot of love for dark-skinned black women, for black women in general, but especially dark-skinned black women, which again, yes, amazing. But I've noticed that she seems to have a bias with some black women and won't call them out like depending on who it is won't call them out when they do things that are wrong when they don't act right whether it's the person is a close friend of hers or in this case with love is blind with ashley ashley is a darker skinned black woman ashley is gorgeous ashley seems to have a a a good head on her shoulders just she's just ignorant to to red flags right and i really didn't like that when it came to analyzing um, Marissa and Ramsey's and then Ashley and Tyler, that she didn't really have grace for Marissa. Like she called Marissa a pick me. And I was like, okay, you can't call Marissa a pick me and then try to say we need to give grace for Ashley when Ashley is doing probably the biggest pick me behavior out of everyone. I mean, we can even, Ramsey doesn't deserve any credit. But thankfully, thankfully, Ramsey's turned down Marissa. Does it hurt in the moment? Yes, but I'm glad he did because now Marissa can truly soar and live her best life. So I was like, that's not fair. Like, you can't come for Marissa, say, like, she's this, she's that, and Ramsey's isn't the villain when he very much is, but yet not have that same smoke for Ashley because Ashley actively ignored red flags as Marissa did in the beginning, except Ashley took it a step further. I mean, this man tells you until the last minute that he has kids and you're just kind of like, okay. Like, no. And Jesse talked about how we didn't see all the conversations, you know, what Ashley's reaction truly was when Tyler told her he didn't have kids. So I was like, okay, if you're going to say we didn't see everything with Ashley and Tyler scenes, then you got to apply that same logic to Marissa and Ramsey's and all the other scenes we didn't see. Like, you can't have favorites. So that's the only thing I don't like about Jesse Wu's analysis sometimes, is that sometimes she refuses to see her own bias. And I know people in her comments do call it out. Um, I, I just didn't like that she was very harsh on Marissa, but did not have the same smoke for Ashley, who did the same thing, if not worse. I, I still like Jessie Wu's content. I'm not going to unsubscribe. She's very entertaining. I love watching her vlogs, her podcast, all of that. So, Jessie, please don't come for me. But these were just my opinions. I just thought I should say it. Taylor and Garrett love their wedding. I like Taylor's dress. I thought it was unique. You know, it was different. Like, it, someone said it on Reddit, said it looked like a corporate chic. And I was like, okay, y'all are, y'all are funny. But no, I liked how different it was. I think it really spoke to the kind of personality and person that Taylor is. She's unique. She's a science nerd. And I thought her wedding as well was beautiful to Garrett. Taylor's parents are so sweet. They really seem to have love for each other. Um, And you could see like Taylor's personality seems to match her dad's. And I thought Taylor was an only child. But then I saw her brother walk in. Uh, down the aisle, I think one of her bridesmaids, I was like, ooh, your brother's kind of cute. Okay, all right. So glad to know that she has, like, a sibling. Garrett seems all in. Garrett's parents are... uh, I like Taylor's parents more. Garrett's parents, especially the mom, like, I don't know, she was still being apprehensive over the whole situation, and I I don't know why she's still, like, um, getting freaked out over this. Like, because it's interesting, actually, in the first couple minutes when they were seeing the wedding, um, I was like, where are Garrett's parents? Are they not coming? But they eventually came. 
So, yeah, I don't know. The mom needs to relax. Like, your son already made his decision. And I get, like, he he would be moving across the country to San Diego at some point. But the mom was acting as if San Diego is in a different country. Like, it's across the... It's still the same U.S. It's just on the West Coast. You could fly. <laughs> like, it's, it's not that... Um, that odd so I thought that was weird and it's also like he's not an only child you know she still has like her other children near her so I I don't know I thought that was weird but their wedding I thought was really sweet um the they both seem really content and ready and mature um they're the only ones that seem to have any kind of level-headedness yes even when Taylor was was upset and even I don't know. I still side I Garrett just a little bit with some previous stuff. But even then, they seemed to be the only ones that were having real life conversations, like actual items that they can check off their list that make sense in the real world. So I like them. Um, They're cute. And they walked off as a couple together. After the kiss at the, the altar, they had hand in hand and walked down the aisle together. They looked very comfortable with each other. You know, their kisses didn't seem fake. And it just it just made sense. So that's it. That's the wedding episodes. I'll be back for the reunion where we get to see no one be held accountable. I doubt we'll see Hannah get held accountable or anyone else for that matter. But I don't know, guys. I don't think I'm coming back. <laughs> I don't think I'm coming back to this franchise. I saw the writing on the wall since season two, and clearly it's only gotten worse. So I think I, I don't... I don't know. I don't think I, I'd be invested in the show anymore. But let me know what you guys think about the wedding episodes, the finale. Are you looking forward to the reunion? And be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see y'all in the next one.